bookworms welcome back to my channel um if you're new here my name is kayla and i'm here to show you some literary goodness um this is the first vlog back in the dorm room um i'm sure you guys missed it i didn't um i've been here for about two days oh it's not even a tuesday it's a wednesday i got back on um on the monday and i've had two days of classes so far um, and things are going pretty well. I have one more class left today and then I'm done for the day and I'll be reading and I actually have homework already so I have to do some of that. But <clears throat> today I am here to show you the um, books I bought for school, the ones that I brought with me to college. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw kind of the fiasco that happened on Monday as I was packing. Um, Monday was a very anxious day for me for some reason. I just did not want to make the transition back to school I was freaking out about packing like I wasn't going to be able to bring enough clothes but then I wouldn't have enough clothes at school to wear all sorts of things um so my mother helped me pack um kind of made me go through everything and like shower what I was bringing and make sure I had everything and she was a lifesaver love you mom um <clears throat> but at that point I had to in order to do that I had to kind of show her what I was planning on bringing to school and I had somehow wedged like 22 books into the bottom of my suitcase. And she's like, this is ridiculous. You can't take classes and read all of these books at the same time. And, you know, my response was kind of like, watch me. <laughs> but I had to cut it down, I think, to eight fun books plus like three that I had hidden in my backpack plus a couple that I left behind. Um, so, yeah. So I had filmed this video actually I pre-filmed when I was at home and now it's a completely different list so we're gonna go through it again um, and something new that I'm doing this year I had so many conversations about this with friends at work um, <clears throat> other just readers that I know um, in my Goodreads goal I never included the books that I was required to read for class um, I only if I read it for class I only included it in Goodreads if I was planning on reading it at some point in my life or I would have read it of my own volition. I just had to read it for class as well. But my friend Caitlin actually said that, you know, it doesn't make any sense not to include them. They are reading hours. They are pages you read, words you read, books that you finally got on your shelf. Um, and you can rate them and still share your ratings. And what if people try and read, you know, Anne of Green Gables and you hate it and they're waiting on your opinion and you're just not giving it to them. So I thought about it and I am going to include the books that I read for school in my Goodreads count this year, but I'm only going to review ones that I have strong feelings about. Um, so this is not going to be like my college review or my second semester review by any means. It just started. Um, I was thinking of doing like a mid-semester like check-in. Um, if you guys want like a dorm tour or a college tour, I'd be happy to do that. And then at the end of the semester, a second semester in review to match the first semester in review video that I have coming out. But just background, I'm taking five classes this semester. I'm taking the sociology class, a class on the psychology of being a freshman and transitioning to college. I'm taking a poetry class, just all about poetry for my English major. I'm taking creative writing and my last class is a history class. So, so there will be books and things that I talk about in there that I might put in a review, my creative writing class. If I find any of the novels that we read as like writing guides and I find them helpful, I would surely do reviews on them or include them in my wrap up if I think they're going to be beneficial for you guys as readers and writers. Um, and my history class is basically, instead of one textbook, we read a lot of like novels, like um, the interesting, interesting narrative of Olada Equiano. And if there were anything that I read in that class that I'm like, you guys might enjoy this, um, or I particularly enjoyed or didn't enjoy, I'd be happy to include a review of that as well. Let us get into it. So we're going to do this a little differently. This is a, my desk. Welcome to my desk. It's a little bit of a mess right now. But up here we have all of the books that I brought for fun, as well as some of my course books. So we're going to start with the not fun ones that I have to bring for class. First book that I have is actually on my iPad. A new thing that I'm trying with buying all these paperback novels instead of 
renting them or buying them from the bookstore, just buying like really cheap iBooks. So the first one we have is Taking a Leap by Pema Chodron. This is for my um, class called Courage to Know. Next up for school books, we have The Seagull Reader in the third edition by Joseph Kelly um, in Poems. This is the book that all of my um, studies in poetry classes based on all the poems that we read. Um, and I actually purchased this one, it is mine, so I can write in it and annotate in them and all of that good stuff. Hello bookworms, um, I am interrupting this video from the future to say that I filmed this video on Wednesday and I was editing it and I was about to post it and I was like, it's Wednesday, but I have to get more books for school on Friday, so why don't I just wait and have all of my books that I need for the first part of the semester in the Friday video. So that's what I did. So today is Friday. Um, I have the flu. I guess it is a good time to get it in the beginning of the semester when not a lot is happening as opposed to around midterms or the end of the semester with finals. So I have the flu. But I want to quickly show you the other books that I have to read for my other classes. So I showed you the Pema, Ch the Pema Children book for um, Taking the Leap for my freshman psychology class and my poetry book for my studies in poetry class. So now I have one book that I need for my history class. We read about six books in that class, but this one is for the first two months of school, so I only bought one. And then the rest are for my creative writing class, which I think are going to be the ones you're more excited in. So first we have this monster. Um, this is The Transformation of the World, A Global History of the 19th Century by Jurgen Osterhamel. Um, this is a big, dense book. Um, so basically I'm taking a globalization class from the 19th century to present day. And this is the history of the entire world throughout the 19th century. So this is our first read. We're going to read it for about a month. Obviously it's a very large book. That one will probably be my roughest read of this semester so far. Next for my creative writing class we have The Practice of Poetry by Robin Ben and Chase Twitchell. Um, this is just a bunch of exercises in writing poems, but also presenting examples of poetry and the different exercises that you'll be working on. Um, just a paperback poetry book. Um, I decided to rent all of my creative writing books as well, but if I do really like them or if I think they're valuable, I will go back and buy them later in my life. Um, to have in my personal library and like if this is one of the ones I talked about earlier in the video that I think would be beneficial for you or that I really really liked and I wanted to review I will have a review up for that but this is the poetry book so the practice of poetry and then I have writing fiction a guide to narrative craft this is the ninth edition by Janet Burroway Elizabeth Stuckey French and Ned Stuckey French um this is kind of just another one of those like instructional books on writing fiction um almost like a workbook this one also has exercises that's kind of the point of the class is to learn the skills and and read about them and then practice them um and do exercises on them so that's what this is this is all different um, explanations of different parts of writing fiction and tips to writing fiction but also the practices and the prompts for you to be able to practice those things it seems very short um so we will see how this goes but i'm excited for this one because i do predominantly write fiction so i am excited to see how this one goes and our last book is very odd um doesn't look like any book i've had this is what it is by linda berry and i think this is such a cool idea to use as a textbook um like the subtitles are the formless thing which gives things form um what is an image the way in and out do you wish you could write um and it is basically an illustrated like way of talking about how you write so i actually have to read this book for next wednesday to page 40 but like all of all of it is pictures so like how do I take notes on this but I'm super interested in this idea and the ideas about writing that will be in here and I think it will despite this kind of more whimsical and childish form I think it will have 
a lot of good advice and ideas on creativity in the writing process, which I could use some help in. Obviously, I'm in creative writing class. Um, so I'm very excited to read this, and I think this would be such a good bookstagram book because it's so weird. But really, really excited for this one. I think this one is obviously going to be really easy to read and get through, but I think it'll also have really important things um, in different ways to look at writing, which will be interesting to see. So yeah, those are my four tech my oh, now I have five in total textbooks six sorry six books to read for class two books that I just brought for fun that I want to read and this is how to read literature like a professor by Thomas C. Foster I haven't read this yet but my sister had to read it for summer reading and highly recommended it to me and I think it'll be really helpful in English I just haven't had the chance to read it yet then for fun reads I have Before I Let Go by Mary Aki Nijkamp I believe it is I might be butchering that name um, it's supposed to come out this month. I'm not sure if it's come out already, but it's supposed to be a really good winter read. It's pretty highly anticipated, and it takes place in Alaska, which is a setting that I'm really interested in, and I'm very excited to read this one. Um, so obviously I brought Zenith along with me by Sasha Osberg and Lindsay Cummings. This came out literally yesterday. I posted my makeup look for it, which I will leave linked in the description box down below. I have about 100 pages left. And Next up is another booktuber type book. Um, this was written by Benjamin of Tomes, um, Ben Alderson. This is Cloaked in Shadow, the book that just came out, I believe, in December or November. It's supposed to be a high fantasy. There are dragons in it. Um, they're supposed to be a gay main character and fairies, and I'm very excited about this one. So another one that I brought along. Then brought City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. If you haven't heard Emma Books, Emma Giordano is doing a reread of the entire Shadowhunter world um, and all of the Shadowhunter literature that there is. And the first book that you're supposed to read by January 26th is City of Bones. So I brought City of Bones along to read after I read Zenith. Um, and I will leave a link to her video about her reread in the description box below and that will have all of the information about the dates to read. This is another arc that comes out April of this year. This is Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian and it's another high fantasy kingdom royale kind of read. It is an advanced reader copy that I got from work. Um, I'm very excited to read this one even though I am trying to get out of kingdom high fantasy worlds but what can I say? I'm a sucker for them. Next up is The Shadow Queen by CJ Redwine. Um, this is a series. This is the first one um, in, I forget what the series is named, but this is the first one, The Shadow Queen, and it is a retelling of Snow White. Um, there's also The Wish Granter, which I also have, which is a retelling of Rumpelstiltskin, and the third one is supposed to come out sometime this year. So I'm trying to read the first two before the third one so I can kind of dive right into the third. Next is Earthsea, A Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. Um, obviously the first book in the Earthsea Chronicles. This is a adult high fantasy series with dragons in it. So this is kind of me branching out into other genres by not just being in YA, um, fae, and kingdom fantasy, but adult fantasy and dragon fantasy as well. Next on my shelf is Mask of Shadows by Lindsay Miller. This came out this past September. Another kingdom fantasy in YA that is more of thievery and assassins, which is kind of cool, and there is also a system of trials and competition, which I'm very interested in. So this arc I've had for a while, and I've been excited to read it, but I finally decided to bring it because it is decently short and I feel like I'll be able to get right into it and um, really read it rather quickly um, and keep me interested in a new series coming out. Next up is The Diviners by Libba Bray. This is a book that I've been wanting to read for a while on my Instagram. It was on my top five TBR tag that um, Emily's Bookhaven tagged me in. This is one of my most like anticipated series of 2018. I don't know if there's another book coming in um, this year. I don't believe there is, but this is a series I've heard so many good things about. It is a paranormal fiction, um, supernatural YA fiction book that I've been wanting to read forever, and I've heard such good things. So I'm really excited to dig into this one day and just kind of devour this series. Then we have Falling Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes. This is supposed to be, um, I guess, 
similar for fans of the Thief series by Megan Wallen Turner. It's another Kingdom Assassin YA fantasy series. Um, I have not read The Thief yet, but I've heard such good things, and I was really, really drawn to this one. I've heard so many good things about this series, so many people have recommended it to me, that I finally decided to get myself a copy, and I decided to bring the first one to school to test the waters and see if I enjoy it before going on to the rest of them. It would not be a true Roy Reading co-list video if a Sarah J Moss book was not mentioned, so I brought along Queen of Shadows, which is the fourth book in the Throne of Glass series. Um, this is, I think, the longest in the series, and it's supposed to be the best. I am hesitant to begin because I get obsessive about these books. I don't have the last one with me, and I know I'm going to get upset if I don't. I also don't have enough sticky flags that I know I'm going to need in this book. So, but I do have it, and I cannot wait to get back into this world and see what's happening with Aelin and Rowan and Kale and Dorian and everybody that I love so very much. This is my well-worn copy of An Enchantment of Ravens. I actually started this book before I went on break this past winter and I forgot it in my dorm over break so I was about halfway through and I'm excited to keep going. This is a fantasy, um, An Enchantment of Raven Ravens, An Enchantment of Raisins, An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson um, and it is very similar to A Court of Thorns and Roses. Um, kind of fey fantasy and artistry and things like that and a human kind of thrust into a fey world so I was really enjoying this book when I started it and when I left for break so I'm excited to keep going with it. So then on my iPad I have a couple more iBooks that I have ready for kind of me to read. I have Surren Surrender Cinder by Marissa Mayer. Um, I have the first Harry Potter book, the fourth Harry Potter book, um, the first book of the selection series that I've been looking to reread and possibly finish that series because I never did. Not because I wasn't interested, I just literally forgot to finish it. Um, so I'd love to reread the selection. And yeah, and I have an Owl Crate coming and I have Owl Crate for the next six months. So it's a birthday gift for my mama. So I have plenty of books to read while I'm here. But that's about it for this video. Um, my little all the books I brought to college. So if you're going to school or you have a massive TBR for the next couple of months, um, let me know in the comment down below, comments down below what you're reading um, and if we're reading any of the same things or if you've read any of the books that I'm reading and you really enjoyed them or not. Um, and I think that is it for this video. So make sure you like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to this channel before you leave if you haven't already. And make sure to check me out on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Pinterest, and Goodreads as Roy Reading Co. And go be my friend on the interwebs. And I will see you guys soon for another one.